Good morning and thank you for streaming live with us here at Rooted Bible Fellowship Church for our Resurrection Sunday service. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Kevin L. Webster, and our First Lady Sharon Webster, we would like to thank you for joining us in our worship experience. We pray that you have a blessed Sunday and we want you to know that he has risen. everybody. Welcome to the house of the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. All around this great country, people are celebrating today. But if you ask them why, they don't know. But we know. My name is Deacon Akinji and I will be presenting the word of our Lord in some scripture reading, trying to usher in the spirit today. able to stand for the reading of his word. I, I would appreciate if you do so. And today's scripture reading is going to come from the book of Luke, the 24th chapter of Luke, and we will read from verses 1 through 12. Again, that's Luke, the 24th chapter Starting at verse 1, we will read through verse 12. Amen. And the word of our Lord reads as follows. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found, the they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in the Lord Jesus, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men be crucified and on a third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others were with them, others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the strips of linen laying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. church let's pray eternal God our father you truly are worthy to be praised first and foremost we want to give you all the honor praise and glory that you truly deserve we stand in all of your majesty your glory and all your splendor Lord Lord we ask you that you uh, forgive us for our sins sins of omission and commission any thought word or deed we pray that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness Lord we thank you for uh, waking us up this morning and starting us on, this, on our way we thank you for this day, Lord, this occasion, this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. Because you know, your word says that you bore our sins, your body on the cross. 1 Peter 2.24. And then we know that 
because you got up but our sins were buried on that cross and now because of your resurrection we have life unto you not only life but life more abundantly those who have put their faith in you those who have put their trust in you those that are justified free from the penalty of a sin when well, we thank you we thank you for the salvation we thank you for this resurrection you know jesus when, when he was speaking to martha he says i'm the resurrection and the life do you believe this we believe lord those who have put their trust in you do believe and we pray for that lost soul that doesn't know you lord that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins it doesn't understand the resurrection doesn't know the resurrection so we pray right now lord for this message that's going to come forth we pray for a, a great appreciation a greater understanding of this so those that don't know you in the pardon of sins they may receive you do may receive them unto yourself that they may put their heart and their trust in you that you may divinely illuminate their minds lord that they will put their trust in you and that you may receive them as you so ordained so we just allow your will to be done. We'll be careful to give you all the honor, praise, and glory that you truly deserve. And we thank you for this resurrection, Lord, that we may live unto you more abundantly. And we give your name all the honor and all the praise that you truly deserve. In Jesus' name, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ultimate superlative to one who surpasses all others. Amen. Is anybody glad that they're alive this morning? That was cute. That was cute. But this ain't coming to America, and I'm not Randy Watson. Is anybody glad to be alive this morning? Today is Resurrection Sunday, and this is the equivalent of the Super Bowl of the NFL. If your favorite team was in the Super Bowl, how loud would you be? How loud would you be for the Ravens this morning? I'm here to tell you that the God that we serve has already won the Super Bowl for you. Amen, somebody. Y'all a little too quiet this morning. This is the day that we celebrate that our Savior got up. When he got up, he had me on his mind. When he got up, he had you on your mind. I'm trying to contain myself because I know Pastor Webster was going to bring the word, but I just feel like we as believers and we as sons and daughters of the God that we serve ought to be more excited about what Christ did for us. Is anybody glad about what Christ did for you? While you were still thinking about the things that you were doing, is anybody glad for what Christ did for you? I don't know about you, but I haven't dotted every I. I haven't crossed every T. Hallelujah. But the God that I serve loves me in spite of. Is anybody else excited about this great big God that we serve? I don't know, Pastor Webb. Today is a celebration. I want somebody to look up to heaven and say, Lord, Thank you for what you've done for me. Come on, lift up your voice and say, Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me. Now, if you're really glad about it, I need you to make some noise in here. I need you to make some noise in here like you're really glad about it. Like you're really thankful that he had you on his mind. Hallelujah. Some says celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. Let's go, y'all. Come on, clap your hands, y'all. Come on, y'all. Celebrate. Say. Praise. 
I think about how he was unselfish enough to think of me. There have been times where I may have done something knowing that God was going to forgive me anyway. But tell somebody, the God that I serve never held it against me. I said he never held it against me. Some of us have not been perfect in our walk. But aren't you glad that you serve a God that loves you unconditionally? Hallelujah. I just want you to look up to heaven and say, Lord, thank you for thinking of me above all. Somebody would just lift up the name of Jesus right here. Right here. Say crew. 
lay behind the stone. Rejected and, Rejected and alone, like a rose, like a rose. Trampled, on the ground. trampled on the ground. You took the fall, and you thought of me, thought of me. above all. Anybody glad that he had you on your mind above all? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, y'all. We say, we say, lay behind the stone. was worth it and he thought you were worth it thank you Lord one more time and you thought of me yeah. above all oh thank you Lord above all Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for thinking of me above all. Above. You paid my ransom, and you did it just for me. Thank you, Lord. And this is how we did it, y'all. So Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Tell somebody that's love. Say Jesus went to Calvary to save the wretch like you and me. Yeah, that's love. Anybody thankful for His love? Come on, say Jesus went to Calvary to save the wretch. Like you and me. Hallelujah. That's love. That's how much he loved me. That's how much he loved you. Say, Jesus, to Calvary, to save a wretch. Like you and me. That's love. Minister Bradley, come sing some of this. That's love. They hung him high. He hung his head for me. He died. That's love. I wish I could get a witness in here to say that's love. He said, No greater love of a man have than this. But one who would lay down his life for a friend. And I'm so glad he loved me so. As I ran before I said, that's love. He said, do you know how much I love you? He said, I gave my life for you. That's how much I love you. I sacrificed myself for you. That's how much I love you. I commanded my love towards you. That's how much I love you. But guess what? But that's not how the story is. The story is three days he rose again. Yes. So glad that's love. Yeah. He said, I got the power to lay down my life. And I got the power to take it up again. That's love. For you 
he did it. For me, he did it. Yeah, yeah. That's the house. So that's love. That's love, yeah. That's love. I'm so glad I'm a friend of God. Yeah. And I'll tell it all over the world. I'll tell it all over the world, yeah. You know what I say? Hallelujah. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our everything. And we bless his holy and righteous name. It's good to to see folks in the sanctuary of the true and living God. Amen. Give yourself a round of applause. Amen. It's good to see the folks in the sanctuary as I look out. Amen. It's good to have our praise team sing it. It's been a whole year. Amen. And our praise team is singing the praises of God. We truly on the Lord, and I don't know about you, but I always get excited this time of year because, watch this, Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe, amen, we owe it all to him, and we will be remiss if we didn't take time out to celebrate the finished works of a wonderful Savior, amen, for those who have known all that he has done for them by way of providing a perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. We would be remiss if we didn't celebrate the fact that he got up. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long because we do have communion today. We have a live communion today. And we want to go straight to the book of Isaiah and just give you a little reminder. That's all I want to do today. Give you a little reminder on this great day of celebration. Amen. Just give you a little reminder all that the Lord Jesus, amen, has done for us, amen. The world is trying to take Jesus off the scene, but I want you to proclaim his name on high. There's no other way to the Father, no other way to God the Father, except by way of the Son, amen. And in the book of Isaiah, just a quick word as a reminder, we need to be reminded, I know I need to be reminded, every now and then of the great sacrifice that was made for you and I. The prophet Isaiah looking from in a prophetic vision looking from the bottom of the cross God the Father looking at the cross from heaven and then you and I the believer looking at the cross from the scriptures. Amen. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, 
smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, God Almighty, God the Father has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Just as a reminder on this great Resurrection Sunday, I don't want to get caught up in no pandemics. I don't want us to get caught up in what you're going to eat later on. I want you to get focused on this great truth. And I want you as a reminder to remember one thing as you walk today and as you celebrate today and as you give his name the highest praise today I want you to remember one truth I want you to walk away and remember that salvation is not cheap I want to stop by to let you know that salvation is not cheap I want you to tell somebody if it's the person next to you the person in your living room or even tell yourself that salvation is not cheap tell somebody salvation is not cheap amen and as we journey to Calvary, we know that the devil himself, he promotes a cheap salvation. You may have your seats. The devil himself, he promotes a cheap salvation. The devil, he, he wants to promote, watch this, he wants to promote uh, bunnies and eggs and uh, bonnets, amen. He wants to promote lilies, amen. But I stop out to let you know that salvation was not cheap. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with the bunnies. There's nothing wrong with the egg. There's nothing wrong with that as long as your focus is truly on the cross. And you recognize all that Jesus has done for you and I, the believer, on that rugged cross. I stop by to let you know on this Resurrection Sunday, brothers and sisters, that salvation is not cheap. So as we look at the journey of Calvary, the journey of a precious savior, the scene up on Calvary. The scene on Calvary, uh, it, it wasn't cheap. The scene on Calvary, it was horrific. The scene on Calvary, it was something that you and I will be horrified if we was there at that very present time early that Friday morning after the Garden of Gethsemane, after the mock kangaroo trial. Amen. After the betrayal of people, Jesus begins this very essence, this very essence of his passion. The very essence of his passion, it involves, watch this, it involves his suffering. See, nobody wants to talk about the suffering. That's why the bunny can never substitute the suffering of Jesus Christ. That's why a colored egg can't substitute uh, the suffering of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why, watch this, commercial um, spring sales can't substitute the suffering of Jesus Christ. Jesus began a long series of physical and emotional torture. Uh, salvation isn't cheap. He was slapped, beaten, battered, bruised. He was mocked, tortured, and humiliated. He was naked and bloody. Amen. Jesus, uh, as we come to Calvary, Jesus suffered at the hands of his friends. Uh, the disciples, they said, we're going to be with you to the very end. Amen. Uh, Thomas said, we're going to go and we're going to die with you. But when the rubber meets the road, Thomas was nowhere to be found. <laughs> uh, Jesus suffered at the hands of Caiaphas in the Sanhedrin. Jesus suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate. Jesus suffered at the hands of Roman soldiers. Jesus suffered at the hands of the crowd. <laughs> the same crowd uh, as Jesus came on that Sunday morning and on Palm Sunday, they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. But on this Friday, they say crucify him, crucify him. Jesus suffered at the hands uh, of the condemned criminals as they 
gave remarks and crass remarks to Jesus as he hung on the cross. Amen. And as we look at this, he was taunted and Jesus was insulted and Jesus was, was, was scorned and Jesus was whipped and Jesus was ripped all the way down to the lacerating of, of his kidneys and exposing his organs and, and all these things from head to heel. But I just want to let you know on this Resurrection Sunday that salvation is not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. Matter of fact, as, as, as the passion intensifies on the cross, and, and I want you to see the cross today because that's where our power comes from. That's where our deliverance comes from. That's where our hope comes from. That's where our in, eternal inheritance comes from. It comes from the rugged cross. In Jesus, the passion intensifies on the cross. And in Isaiah 52, verse 14, he says, Just as there were many who were appalled at him, Watch this, his, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. See, the devil don't want you to see the suffering. He don't want you to see the persecution of God manifested in the flesh, amen? It says here that Jesus was beaten so bad before he even reached the cross that he didn't even look like a man. Amen. We got these little pictures of, 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 of portraits of Jesus Christ, which shouldn't even be hanging up in our homes anyway, with, with a little drip of blood coming down the side. But that's not what Isaiah the prophet said. Isaiah said, Isaiah said that, that he was marred so bad that he looked like a piece of meat, amen, that you couldn't even recognize him. His, his mama couldn't recognize him, and nobody could even recognize him. I just want to stop by on this Resurrection Sunday, amen, just to let you know that salvation is not cheap. No, it's not cheap, amen. Uh, nailed in his wrist, nailed in both feet, hung in an unnatural position, every muscle burning with pain within him, every muscle paralyzed, lacerated veins, crushed tendons, wounds aflame and arteries swollen and waves of nausea and fever and affection and filling his body unable as he hung on a rugged cross to exhale and inhale unbearable thirst in a, in a fight, in a fight, a fight for every single little breath of air. Stop by to let you know that uh, salvation is not cheap. Matter of fact, Jesus, as he's hung on a rugged cross, we got to see it, church, because when you see it, you can appreciate this great salvation. You can appreciate the sacrifice that was made for you and I. Watch this. This earth is going to pass away, but one day we're going to see him just as he is, and you're going to appreciate what he did for you and I on that rugged cross. Matter of fact, Jesus thoughts while on the cross. Jesus said in his own mind, in his own spirit, I'm, I'm poured out in Psalms 22. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joy. My heart has turned to wax, and it has melted within me, and, and my mouth is dry. Like a pot shared, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you lay me in the dust of death. We're going somewhere this morning, amen? And the dogs, the dogs, he's, he's talking about the Roman soldiers and, and those who tormented him and those who laughed at him and those who scorned him. The dogs surround me, pack of villains, encircle me and they pierce my hands and, and my feet, amen? I stop out and let you know that uh, salvation, redeemed family, was not cheap. The price paid was priceless, church. It was a price that no one else could pay for you and I, for our redemption. And the price that was paid was, was priceless, amen, church. And, 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 and we have to understand that no cross, no salvation. And, and we try, and the world tries to sell salvation, try to make it glamorized, amen. 
But salvation comes from the depths, brothers and sisters, the depths of a sacrifice. Salvation comes from suffering. Salvation comes from judgment. Salvation comes from death. Matter of fact, the symbol of the cross is the symbol of death. And, 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 and many times in our world, we try to glamorize what Jesus did for us, but I stop by to let you know that salvation was not cheap. First Peter tells us, he says, for you know that it was not with the perishable things. Walk with me this morning. Things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, amen? You wasn't redeemed by no money. You was redeemed by nothing that was gold, nothing that this earth has to offer, amen? But we were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to us from our ancestors. But we were redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. The precious blood of the Lamb has redeemed you and I, and we have been purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. And with all that being said, we must realize this great resurrection morning, amen. We must realize that, that even though for you and I, salvation is free, amen? Even though for you and I, watch this, we are saved by grace. And even though uh, you and I are fall under God's mercy, but we must recognize that someone had to pay the price. Huh. Salvation is not cheap. Jesus never presented an easy salvation. We living in a world now that if you just quote a few scriptures and, 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 and sing a few songs and, and you all right, but Jesus, watch this, brothers and sisters, as we understand on this Resurrection Sunday, Jesus never promoted a cheap salvation, nor should we promote a cheap salvation. No, Jesus never promoted a, a cheap salvation because salvation comes with something. It, it comes. See, see, he never promoted a cheap salvation because salvation, walk with me, demands humility. All that Jesus did for us on that rugged cross and for you and I to put our faith and trust in him, it means that we got to humble ourselves. That means that we got to be bowed down within our hearts and our spirit. And watch this. You got to be broken in order to be saved. You got to be broken down to nothing to recognize that only one can raise you up. You got to get to the place of your life that is not about you. It's all about him. And I am broken and I'm like a beggar that stands in need of some bread. Oh, salvation demands humility. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, he says, come to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is humility. See, we got a lot of prideful folks. We got folks that don't want to bow down to the king of kings and to the Lord of lords. But I stop by to let you know that salvation isn't cheap. And salvation demands that you and I bow down. Come to me, all you who are weary. In burden, I don't know about you, but this is Pastor Webster in here, amen, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, Jesus says, upon you, and watch this, learn of me, amen, not of the world, and for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you, watch this, I don't know about anybody else, but I know over 30 years ago, I needed rest for my soul. Is there anybody in the house that needed rest for your soul? And as we humble ourselves, he's given us rest. In our soul, salvation is not cheap. And not only that, salvation demands, it demands that you wanting to do God's will. Salvation, what Jesus did at the cross, it wasn't cheap. When he laid down his life, when he became a sacrifice for you and I, this wasn't no cheap thing. This wasn't no thrill thing. And for you and I, it demands that you and I want to do his will. Amen. We got a lot of folks talking about they saved, but they don't want to do God's will. But I stop by to let you know, when you get saved, you want to do God's will. When you get born again, you want to please him. When you have been touched by him and covered in his blood, watch this. Nobody can stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Do I got anybody in here that also knows what I'm talking about? Those who want to do God's will. The Bible says in Matthew, it tells us in, in the book of Matthew, it tells not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but the one who does the will of the Father. Did you hear me this morning? I just want to stop out and let you know something, that a salvation is not cheap. 
I just want to let you know that Jesus never promoted a cheap salvation. Amen. Not only that, salvation demands something. You know what salvation demands? Because of what Jesus did on us on that, on that, on that glorious uh, Friday. Amen. What Jesus did for us. Amen. What it demands is a willingness. It demands a destiny decision. That you and I must make a decision for your destiny. Amen. Watch this. Nobody can make it for you. Your mama can't make it for you. Your daddy can't make it for you. No one can make it for you. You must make a decision. Amen. For your destiny. Amen. The Bible says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate. In the narrow, the road that leads to life, and only few finds it. You got to walk with me today. Salvation is only for those who make the right decision. Salvation is only for those who, who, who recognize that they need to get on the Lord's side. Do I got anybody in here that want to be on the Lord's side? See, traveling on the narrow road means this. That on the, when I get on the narrow road, that means my sins can't go with me. Amen? And my stuff can't go with me because the road is too narrow. See, on the narrow road, it can just be me and Jesus. Amen? But when you travel on the broad road, amen, you can carry your sin. You can carry your mess. You can go to church, you can preach sermons, you can sing songs, but on a broad road, it's taking you straight to a burning hell. I don't know about you, I'm so glad that I got off the broad road. I'm so glad that now I'm walking on a narrow road. I'm not what I used to be, but I'm so glad that God is doing something new in me. I'm not perfect, but I'm seeking his face on the narrow road. You got to make a decision. You got to make a decision, watch this, for your destiny. You got to stop coming up with excuses what your daddy did to you and what your mama did to you and what society did to you and what the man did to you. Let me tell you something. Time is running out and you better make a decision. You better make a decision. But salvation also demands something else. It demands a willingness to want to lose your life for him. You got to walk with me today. I just want to stop by to let you know, Rudy Bible, that salvation is not cheap. A price was paid for you and I. Salvation demands a willingness to lose your life for him. Watch this. I, I love this scripture. But it says in, in Matthew 10, 37, it says, anyone who loves their father, Let's talk about this family thing going on. Amen? Uh, let's talk about, Jesus says, let me touch you in your heart. Let me, let me go down to where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> because you tell me you love me, but do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than this? <laughs> do you love me more than what you want to hold on to? How much do you really love me? Because salvation demands <laughs> a willingness for you to want to lose your life for me. Demands a willingness to lose your life for him. Anyone who loves their father or mother uh, more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone, anyone, uh, anyone who loves their son. Oh, come on, mamas. Oh, all their daughters. Come on, daddies. More than me is not worthy of me. And whoever, ha, whoever does not take up their cross. Here we go. Whoever doesn't come to the place that they will not die to the self. Whoever don't want to come to the place of brokenness. Whoever don't want to come to the place of humility. Whoever don't want to come to the place of worship. Watch this. If you don't follow me, there is nothing in me that is in you. Salvation. Rooted Bible. They say we some radical folks. Say, Pastor, what radical? You know what? This gospel's radical. Salvation is not cheap. It's not cheap. But lastly, salvation does something else. When we look at that cross and we look at all that Jesus has done for us. I don't know about you. When I think about all that he's done for us, amen? Do you ever step back and think about all that he's done for us? Watch this. I come to realize 
that salvation demands a true worshiper. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, I, I ain't talking about a few claps of the hands. I ain't talking about every once in a while. No, a true worshiper is a worshiper in their heart. <laughs> See, one thing you can't do, you can't fake a true worshiper. You can't manufacture and make up a true worshiper. Because a true worshiper is created by the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit finds his way in your heart, watch this, you become a true worshiper. It doesn't make a difference how many pandemics hit. It doesn't make a difference how many viruses hit. It doesn't make a difference how many jobs you lose. It doesn't make a difference how much money you don't have. When you are a worshiper, you worship at all times. You worship no matter the circumstance. When you are worship, you worship when you're down, huh? but you also worship when you're up. Huh? You worship when you're laying in your sick bed, and you worship when things ain't all right around you. Why? Because you are a true worshiper. See, a true worshiper will worship. See, well, I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus hallelujah and all come on preacher and all that he's done for me how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet uh, on a solid ground how he made me brand new uh, within my spirit man when I think uh, about the goodness of Jesus and all uh, that he done for me then my soul uh, any souls in here crowd hallelujah for the victory and then we sing the song my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean or and then we sing out what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus and what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of there we say power power wondrous working power in the blood of the lamb power power wondrous working power in the blood of the lamb and the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never no never never lose its power let's park right there let's give the lord a shout of praise i stop by to let you know that salvation is not cheap give the lord a shout of praise thank him for who he is thank him for what he's done thank him for what he brought you out of thank him for what he's taking you into thank him for redeeming your wretched soul and give the lord a shout of praise Hallelujah. I stop by to let you know on this resurrection Sunday, that's all Pastor Webster got to say, is that salvation is not cheap. Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Give the Lord another shout of praise. He's good like that. He's good like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. He's good like that. He's good like that. And so we thank the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday. And we recognize that this salvation that God has given me through his son, Jesus Christ, it is not cheap. Hallelujah. We're going to prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion. Walk with me. We thank the Lord even in seasons that we're in right now. I don't know about you, but I'm walking in the victory because Jesus already paid it all. Uh, the Bible says to be absent from the body. Thank you, dear. To be present with the Lord. Where my deacons at? Man, we ain't had communion at the table in a whole year. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Y'all give me three deacons on this side, three deacons on that side.
There you go. Y'all good right there. We got some good faithful brothers. We thank the Lord for what the Lord has blessed us and kept us. The Bible says to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. And what that means is this, simply this. I don't know if you know this, we're in a win-win situation. To live is Christ, to die is gain. So our hope is in him, amen. Our eternal inheritance, watch this, because we got a lot of folks preaching some garbage out here. Your inheritance is not in your homes, in your property. It's not in your money in the bank. No, your inheritance is eternal. God has promised you and I a hope that is eternal. And that hope comes our way of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I would truly, truly get away from 80 years of this life. Switch out 80 years for this life for a life that is eternal in glory. Amen with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we come to this table on this Resurrection Sunday, recognizing the price that was paid. It was costly. Amen. One second. We ask those at home, those who are at home, that you would partake of the Holy Communion with us. On that night that Jesus was to go to a rugged cross, up in the upper room, his last earthly meal with his boys, he tells them a command that's still given to the New Testament church. The command is that we observe the Lord's Supper until he returns. That's a command to the New Testament church. Amen. Church is getting away from that. Two commands God has given us by way of his son. Be baptized by the water and observe the Lord's Supper. And so we come today recognizing all that Jesus has done for us. This cracker symbolizes the body which was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we have been healed. Amen. And so we come today thanking him for loving us so much that he will go to a rugged cross. But then the drink represents his blood. The Bible says that after the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. There's no remission. And this blood, this juice represents the blood of the new covenant, which is established through the blood of Jesus Christ. Watch this. We are in a bloody, bloody personal relationship. We're covered in the blood of a wonderful Savior, and I'm so thankful for it. So as we come today, let's partake of the Holy Communion, thanking the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday for his body and for his blood. Let's partake it together. And let's, let us pray. Father, we thank you for always in your mind knowing that man will fall short of your glory. And because of your infinite wisdom, you designed a plan that will bring man back into your very presence. So your son, your only begotten son, Jesus, came into this little land of sorrow and robed himself in flesh and offered his body as a sacrifice, his blood for atonement. And we thank you, Lord God, that by putting our faith in your son, that we are now those who have been partakers of his propitiation. We thank you, Lord. Now, Lord God, we pray that you would empower us as your children that resurrection power would truly dwell in us and that we would go forth to a mean and cruel world to let the world know that Jesus is alive and well, that Jesus is seated at your right hand and that all power is in his hand. Death, he has taken over. The grave, he has defeated. He has spoiled principalities and by his peace, we have been healed. We thank you, Lord. Now show yourself strong, and we thank you for this church. We thank you for these officers and for these members. 
bless as only you can in the marvelous, matchless name of a wonderful Savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the church say amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord another shout of praise. Hallelujah. I know we can do better than that. Get up on your feet. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for coming out to our resurrection service. And we recognize all that Christ has done for us. We want you to be safe, stay plugged in, stay in fellowship. Amen. We're looking forward to more fellowship. Let's keep everything safe. Let's keep everything in the protocol. And we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. Amen. Let's be dismissed. I would like to take a minute and thank Sister Vicki Richardson for planting them beautiful flowers. Amen. She got our place looking beautiful. Amen. Thank the Lord for our musicians, our minister of music. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for our technical support team. Amen. Sister Tasha, Brother Mike, Minister Rufus, we want to thank them for all the great work they has done for us this whole year. Amen. For the great work. Amen. We want to thank, amen, our drummer for coming out. Amen. Being a part of with us. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to thank you for thinking of our robbery to come out to church on a Sunday morning. We see you on Wednesday and then next Sunday if the Lord says so. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Now, Father, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, be with us, strengthen us, surround us, empower us, provide for us, and grace us so that we may truly be light and salt on this earth. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. Thank you for joining us today in our Sunday service. And to get more sermons from our pastor, visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check us out on Facebook. Have a safe and blessed week. God bless.